It's a red cap extravaganza! <laughs> Hi guys, how's everyone doing? I've been wanting to do this video for a really, really long time. It's essentially a spotlight on one of my favourite fragrances in the entire world. I know a lot of you guys really, really love it as well. But it just got a bit confusing, didn't it? The whole thing went a bit crazy. d and just took it away and then remade it. And there's been a lot of... I've been asked a lot of questions about the different formulations of this fragrance. So that's what I'm here today to talk about. So, I don't really know where to start. I guess I'm firstly going to have to say thank you to um, one of my Alps from I know smelly friends group people and also a subscriber, Jennifer McRae, who sent me the most recent version of it, which is here. They go in chronological order. Ish. Thank you. You've allowed me to actually get all of these fragrances out and smell them and talk about them and yeah, we're just going to do this, alright? So, d and Red Cap, massive, massive fragrance, first ever released in 2000, uh, sorry, 2000, 1992 it came out. Oh, that was a good start. 1992 it was, and uh, what I'm here to talk to you about today is, um, I can't really talk about the years that each of these things changed because it's very unclear and it's very hard to decipher, but what I'm here to talk to you about is the differences in packaging and mainly the smell. Um, from what I found. It's a tiny bit off the cuff, but that's just how I roll, okay? So if you guys wanna, ever want to buy it, and you're looking out for the original or which formula, I can tell you the subtle differences between the packaging and the smell, so it might give you a better idea of what it is you're actually buying. So, we'll start with the original formula, which is this one over here. 1992 it came out, um, Dolce & Gabbana released it, it was a hit, I have a friend well, my, my friend's girlfriend used to wear this exclusively, so I'm very familiar with the original formula. It is very different, not very different, but there is a big difference between this one and its predecessors. So, 1992, there's, what's, what's annoying about this fragrance is the bottles never change, so it's really hard to tell which one you've got. If you were to buy just a single bottle of it online somewhere, you might not really know what you're getting until you get it. So, we'll start with this one. The main noticeable thing about the original, original formula is this black box on the logo. None of the other ones have it at all afterwards. It just has a gold D and G, that's it. So if you can find this anywhere, you know you've got the original formula that was made in Italy, and it says it on the box as well on the back, it says made in Italy. All of the predecessors were made in Germany, so D and G just handed over it to Germany. I'm not sure why. Anyway, the only difference in the bottle that I've been able to tell is that all of the lids on the, on the later ones are kind of more of a clear red, like this. Some of them are a bit dirty. And this formula is more, it's a little bit misty. So it's a good way to tell. Also the, um, what do you call that thing in the middle? The atomizer spray thing, they became a lot thinner in the later version. So, thick bottle spritzer, tuby tubiness, and um, yeah, obviously the box has this black square in it, so that's the easiest way to tell. So while I'm doing that, I'm, I haven't sprayed them on these cards yet. I came prepared today, guys. Let's spray it on. It's gonna be a D&G Red Cap Abundance Cloud in my house. I don't mind. So before I kind of do a comparison, I will tell you about this one. There is an obvious difference between the original one and everything that came after and the main thing is is how it, this one smells more vintage like the aldehydes are really ramped up in this one so it smells deeper, it smells older in terms of time, it smells a lot more throwback like and this one takes a really really long time to develop but when it does develop it's one of those room-filling fragrances that you just can't get away from. I mean, this girl that I know, she used to wear it out clubbing with us and I could just smell her all the time. It's really heightened powder, really deep, a little bit more old smelling and it is the best one. You know, vintages are usually the best one, sorry to say, but it's just the case. So yeah, we'll leave that one there for now. So I'm gonna guess around 
the 2001 mark was where my friend was still wearing this. I'm guessing around 2005, the formula changed. So, the biggest notable difference is, is the packaging. There is no black logo around the bottle, but uh, around the... There is no black square around the logo at all. Um, you can notice on the back of the box in the small gold words, it says made in Germany now. So, that's a really big indicator of which one you have, as well as obviously the black square but within this time period here because this is the newest one within this time period there was a couple of different things and I didn't even notice until today actually that's why there's five I thought there were four but there's five this is the eau de toilette this was the first one that I tried that wasn't the original um, let's spray it on the little card I noticed about this one straight away when I smelled it that Although it's, they, they all smell the same, obviously, it's the Indie Red Cap, but this one really had a little bit of depth taken away. It's more powdery, this one. It smells a little bit more alcoholic-like in the, in the opening. It eventually gets to the same place, but you don't have as much longevity. It's still massive. I mean, it's a strong fragrance. There's no denying that, but it kind of... The aldehydes are kind of t have taken a backseat, so it's not as deep. I could smell the basil more in this one, so it's got a slightly more herbal opening, where this one's got that kind of brown, aldehyde kind of richness going on. So, I still love it though. I wear this one all the time. I mean, it's great. Really, really cool. But what I wanted to make a point of saying was, this, these are all from the same time period, all three of these. This one over here is exactly the same as this, but there's a difference I noticed on the back. This one here, this is the 100ml, says that it's 79% alcohol volume and the 50ml one, uh, where is it? Oh no, it's this one. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, this one says 78% alcohol volume. So, I don't know why, I don't know if that's what's na what normally happens in a difference in size, but what I'm going to do now is compare the two that are from the same era but they're just different sizes with a different level of alcohol. So let's do that. Guys, I could do this on skin, but it would be very, very confusing. It's already very confusing, believe me. So this is the 78% volume one, and this is the 79% volume one. I'm guessing there's not gonna be a lot of difference. I guess you might be able to tell more when you wear it, that one may be slightly stronger than the other, but we'll see. While I'm sniffing that, I have noticed between, because I've had three, four, maybe five bottles of this. <laughs> I, I use it a lot, I'm not gonna lie. I've had maybe five bottles of the second formula, and I noticed differences between each of the bottles that I had as well. So, I mean, it's so complex, we could be here all day, but we'll carry on. So, 78%. It does feel a bit stronger, I'm not gonna lie. It's just that obvious thing, like, we're gonna, it's going to sound obvious, but this one just feels a tiny bit more intense than this one. It's still red cap at the end of the day though, and we do love it. Yeah, this one feels a little bit stronger than that one. That's kind of what I was expecting to find. Anyway, onto this one right here. So, eau de toilette, eau de toilette, eau de toilette, eau de toilette. There was a strange in-between formulation that they made around this, this period here and it's called Parfum de Toilette. And um, from the research that I've done, a Parfum de Toilette is somewhere in strength between Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. So I guess it's a, it's just stronger, I'm guessing. I'm, they, I'm not sure they reformulated it in this period. Um, they just either, they had different concentrations and that's probably what they did. So let's see, let's smell the, let's smell the one that I usually wear, which was the first time they reformulated it, and this Parfum de Toilette one because it's probably going to be more intense as well. Oh, okay, yeah, it is. This one here, um, I can really feel that it's, it smells immediately, immediately like red cap straight away, where the original takes a long time to get to where it needs to go. The first bit of it is very brash. This is one of, those, one of the ones that I would say, spray it on at least an hour before you leave the house, but these ones just seem to get there straight away, so. Yeah, I can smell basil a lot more in that one. That's really cool. I'm scared to use that one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 
the Parfum de Toilette is as I expected. It's kind of more intense. It smells a little bit more complex. It's still the same formula, you can tell. They still feel like they're from the same family. This is the one that jumps out as being different, but... Yeah. Oh wow, I'm gonna wear the Parfum de Toilette after this video. Anyway, we're gonna move on to the latest formula, which is the newest one. So we're gonna move on to the latest formula. D&G confused the hell out of everybody because they took this fragrance away from us. Ugh, what the hell were they doing? And then they relaunched the fragrance. It's just called Pour Femme. You know, everyone knows it as Red Cap, but the new release wasn't Red Cap anymore. It was actually maroon -y type purple color. And um, they named it Pour Femme. So a lot of people thought that it was coming back again, just in a different bottle. When in reality, it was an entirely different fragrance. It was filled with marshmallow. I mean, it was an entirely different fragrance. Nothing like this at all. So. A lot of people got excited, I did myself, and I thought, wow, that's really cool, I'm gonna go and smell it, only to be highly disappointed. However, it is back. It is seeping back onto the market again. You can find it again, you can find it everywhere. Um, it's becoming available, so for all of you guys that wanted to ever try it, I'm happy for you because you can get a semblance of what it used to be. So, package differences. It's a very, very ex subtle difference between the middle formula and this new one. The only difference I can tell is that there is a tiny piece of um, text. Oh gosh! There's a tiny piece of text that's missing from the from the ingredients on the back. The other one, the this one, middle one, used to have USA caution, flammable, etc., um, and it says reference eight one zero eight three zero eight one eight. The new one doesn't have that. It's also still made in Germany, but it has less text on the back. And that's the, gonna be the tough one, because if you're gonna buy it online, it's gonna be hard unless somebody can send you, you know, real close up pictures of the text on the back. So yeah, really interesting. Let's smell it anyway. This is the newest one here. Thank you, Jennifer McRae. Hey, hey, McRae. What I can notice about this one straight away, and I have tried this one on my skin a few times, is that they seem to have gone maybe a little bit backwards to how the original smelled. I can smell more aldehydes in this one than any of these three. Where these are more powdery, this one feels a little bit more aldehydic. I hate that word, aldehydic, aldehydic, I'm not sure. But yeah, it, this one is it, very close. It's, very, it's, it's got kind of like an amalgamation of both of those. Both of those. You have to put the time frame in here. Time frame. <laughs> it feels a, a kind of, yeah, like a lot more aldehydic. It feels a little bit more like the kind of dirtiness that you got in the original. However, it still smells very similar to everything else that's on the table. Oh. Okay, Jennifer, you told me that this one doesn't last on your skin as much. I mean, we, we'd have to probably do a test on about 10 people. Come in, friends. I don't have that many friends, I can't do it. I'm just gonna do it for, you know, the video's sake, because this is the newest formula that you guys can buy. I'm gonna do a skin test of both, between this one and the Eau de Toilette that was the, the previous one. It's, there's no point in me doing a, a vintage one because they are, they're harder to find, so. Let's do a little wafty comparison of the newest one, which came out, I think, late last year? Let's see. There's a, only a very subtle difference Subtle difference indeed, it's like, this one, it does feel a tiny bit warmer, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's ultimately, it's red cap, but it's only if you really want to get into depth with it, are you going to be able to say, oh, well, that one's different from that, or that, the longevity of this one, I'm guessing, is going to be a lot more, um, because things now are just getting more and more watered down, there's nothing, we can't get away from that, it sucks, but, um, yeah. It feels a bit smoother, that one, and a tiny bit more watered down. That one's got a little bit more body to it, but it's they're all red cap. They're all known and loved. Yeah, I will stick to my guns and say that this newest one feels like they have tried to go back a bit to what the vintage was, because it does feel a little bit more aldehydic and a little bit more vintagey smelling, where this one feels like it might have been trying to appeal to the masses more, where it was a bit more powdery and fresh. So, plus side, 
This smells a little bit more like the vintage. Downside, it's not going to last as long. You have to take your pick. But at least you guys now know what to look for when buying it. The newer ones are all made in Germany and don't have the black box. The old vintage formula is made in Italy and it does. And um, yeah, if you the, the middle version has this USA caution flammable piece of text on the box. Um, yeah, and that's it. Because everything else is the same. It's really, really hard. Anyway, guys, this was a fun video. I've wanted to do it for a really long time. And I'm going to wear the puff de toilette now. Anyway, guys, hope you like this video. I could go on about it for ages. I, want, I just hope that it helped you in some way. And uh, I'm just about to make love to the puff de toilette. Slow-mo. Much on my know. Click my logo down there to subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon for another video. Goodbye.